Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We can't think of a better way to end the calendar year with you guys on this wonderful topic. It's going to a lot of people who I don't often see, so it's just a testament to our topic, but I think also to our speaker, who we'll meet shortly. My name is Gina Sian, and I manage the Paul's Alumni Sharing Knowledge Program, so we are honored that you're here. This is a part of our breakfast series. We do it every month. I hope you keep coming back. If this is your first time, Raise your hand. There's a big portion of you, so please do keep coming back. We have our schedule in the back of all the different topics uh, for the rest of the year. So we're going to have it until June, and then we'll have a little break in the summer, and we'll come back again with a fresh new series of breakfast topics uh, and wonderful speakers like today. Uh, our DAS program, if you're not familiar, I pulled up, uh, we pull up our website here. It's ask.depaul.edu. Our speakers are normally our alumni, but also more importantly, they're our Ask Mentors, uh, who are more than willing to give with you their, their career advice, the guidance on searching for careers, jobs, but also just professional development, such as our topic today. So our mentors, we have about 1,300 mentors. They're in different industries, different job functions, different locations, but majority of them are here in Chicago. So they're attending these breakfasts. So for the sake of our speaker and also the people who are here, if you are an Ask Mentor, you could please raise your hand. So a lot of ask oh, mentors in the room today. Wonderful. If you're an alum but maybe not quite an ask mentor yet, I invite you to please join our efforts and be an ask mentor. Grad students, undergrad students. Okay. And as always, you know, and there's also some faculty and staff here. So as always, it's a mix of people. So do keep coming back for the open networking. In addition to our presentation, you get a chance to meet people in the room here today. Uh, we also do practice interviews. So if you're preparing for internships or our job interviews, uh, we have mentors who can also practice with you your answers. Uh, I don't want to take any more time from our speaker. He's a wonderful individual. You've seen his bio. You've read it in the announcement. Um, I know that he'll do an even better job in sharing a little bit more about his journeys. Uh, he's done a lot of uh, about 10 years or so of, of teaching and coaching and 15 years of consulting for different companies and organizations. And one of his core expertise is our topic today, which is emotional intelligence. He obtained ZDD from Argus University, his MBA in MIS uh, here at DePaul University. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Robert Gagliano. Okay, well, uh, I usually project pretty well. Can everyone hear me okay in the back? I know you can. All right, very good. So, well, thank you for having me, first of all. This is the first time that I present here. I have another presentation in uh, February for Career Services, but this is a good way to start my engagement here with uh, DePaul. I graduated in 1989, a few years back, with an MBA and MIS, as Gina was saying, and uh, I immediately started a career in uh, information technology as a manager and as a consultant. I worked for IBM, for Allstate Insurance, uh, uh, CC Industries, and then about 12 years ago, I had enough of that, and I had to change. So I was lucky enough to have a wonderful severance package from my company, and part of the severance package was six months of coaching. And uh, working with coaches, I learned two things. One was I found a passion for teaching, and the other one I found a passion for coaching. I saw these coaching coaches, I didn't know what they were doing, I liked what they did, and I said, I bet I can do it better. So I, I retrained myself, I recreated myself, start studying for a doctorate in organizational leadership. Today mostly I teach courses in organizational leadership, organizational development. As a part of my career, so what I've done is uh, I have uh, accumulated a bunch of different certifications. I always tell my clients and my students you want to have the right mixture of degrees which attest to the fact that you know you have the knowledge, certifications that attest to the fact that you can do, and experience, of course, so that you have applied all of that learning and then you can consider yourself an expert. So, 
I missed something probably very important. You probably notice a slight accent here. Uh, I came as a foreign student, I'm from Italy, and uh, I came here when I was, uh, I don't know, 27 or something like that. So I, I got a bachelor degree in accounting that I never used in my life. Uh, oops, sometimes that happens in your career. And then I came here to Nepal and I did like the, the computer information system. So that worked for 15, so that was okay. Uh, coaching and teaching has been working for the past 12 years and we'll see how long that will last. <laughs> so I am... Um, I'm going to talk to you about emotional intelligence a little bit from a different perspective. The topic is wellness. Of course, you know, we, when we think about wellness, many times we think about uh, uh, our body, exercise, and eating well, and everything else. I will specifically focus on emotional well-being. Okay? So, uh, I'm an open book, you can ask me any questions, we can make this as interactive as you want. I usually make this presentation on emotional intelligence, there are seven competencies of emotional intelligence. I can be talking to you for the entire day or have a 10 week course on this, uh, certainly not a problem. So I will just uh, focus on a few things, probably the first two or three competencies of emotional intelligence and then we go from there. So far so good? Yeah. So, how are you feeling today? Because we're going to talk about feelings and let me welcome these ladies and give them some handouts. How are you? Thank you. Good. Uh, let me give you some more. They're over here, Gina, so... Thank you. Okay. So what do you know about emotional intelligence? You are here, you showed up, you're interested. What? Yes. Um, I have been a technical writer before in IT and I deal with many different personalities and I have to keep my cool and get them to talk to me and they're very smart and some of them are very intimidating, so I need to like learn how to keep my cool, but also get what I need from them. So I don't know if that Absolutely. translates Absolutely, that's to very important. And using emotional intelligence, we understand our own feelings, right? And then uh, we understand how to express those feelings appropriately, and then we can use uh, these uh, two competencies in order to make appropriate decision making on how we interact with others. Any other ideas? Yes? I uh, work in a hospital. I struggle in with the doctors. I work in the cat lab where we do the angiograms of the heart. So when we're putting a stent in the coronary artery of the heart, you know, it's very stressful. So sometimes they're screaming at me and I have to calm them down and the whole uh, uh, team, we work as teams. So if someone goes, um, uh, their heart stops or whatever, that's the most stressful of all times. I bet it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, yes. We will be talking about that as well then. Thank you. Yes? Uh, particularly for me, uh, as, a, as a trainer, I'm more concerned about managing vulnerabilities to create an environment that is conducive to learning. So emotional intelligence mm -hmm. plays a critical component. For me, not Tony, to recognize my faults, but others, and figure out ways for win-win interaction. And how do you do that? <coughs> how do you make people feel comfortable? I show my vulnerabilities myself. Okay, all right. Mirror approach. Okay, okay. And if you think about it, one of the most important things is to create a safe environment. All right? And that is why uh, you know, we have nice warm food over there. Uh, this is very welcoming over here, right? Uh, please call me Robert, uh, leave the doctor aside. Uh, let's make this comfortable for you and myself so that we open up for learning instead of being afraid and intimidated. 
So I'm just not telling you this, I'm doing this, or at least trying to. So at any times, um, you know, you need to go grab something so you stay awake and eat, uh, feel free. I'm used to teaching in classrooms, so this happened to me all the time, so it doesn't bother me. I, well, I might ask you to grab something for me, okay? But uh, what we try to do here, to establish a safe environment where I can be myself and I feel free to express. And that is really, really important. Any comments on that? You guys do that in your work, create a safe environment, or at least do you try? Because that makes you feel better. We're talking about wellness, right? <clears throat> All right, well, let's. I'm not much for PowerPoint presentations. I'm going to put stuff out there, read it, and then pay attention to me, OK? So. Um, Emotional intelligence, so what is it? Okay, it's the ability to think intelligently with our emotions. And one of the things that uh, we want to remember about emotional intelligence is uh, feelings that do not come first. It might seem like, but actually what happens is first we have thoughts, and the thoughts that we entertain will cause the way we feel. I do career coaching, right? So I ask my clients, well, first my clients come to me and say, you know, I'm having some difficulties of finding a job, it's a tough economy, um, maybe I'm older, or I don't have enough experience, or whatever it might be, right? And then I ask them, this is probably the most important question that I do ask my client. What kind of thoughts do you entertain during the day? Well, I think that's really hard. Uh, I'm, I feel I'm not qualified. I don't have the experience. All the jobs are going abroad. I, whatever reasons, the economy is bad. It looks like it's getting better, but not really. Uh, you know, I'm always uh, stuck with uh, part-time jobs. I never find what I really want. Uh, Okay, so how do you feel because of those thoughts? Well, uh, I'm really not very hopeful and uh, I'm not sure how this is going to end up. I'm, I'm, I, uh, I cannot sleep at night, uh, I'm fearful. Okay, so what actions are you taking? Well, not much. Uh, I don't even believe, I send a lot of resumes and it doesn't work. Networking, I'm too down to go out and network with people, and uh, so you're not doing anything. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, we're done. <laughs> I'm not that tough with the clients, okay? But I'm just trying to raise their awareness of where they are because. Uh, Can everybody see it? Yeah. Okay. Thoughts. Emotions. I write really that. Um, thoughts, emotions, actions. Results. Positive or negative results will create new thoughts. But everything starts here, not here. This will determine how we feel. How we feel will determine what the, our actions, our actions will have results. Out of these results, we will have new thoughts. If you read a copter leadership, it's all about small wins, right? And it doesn't take so much to accumulate small wins. Even just showing up for a networking event like this one is a small win. 
If you decide to ask a question, to participate, to make a comment, is a second win. If you reach out to, to someone else and start talking and practicing and telling them what you're doing, where you're going, that's another third win. You get out of here with some business cards, it's another win. Look how many wins you can have today in just an hour. Make sense? So, it all starts here. Stock your thoughts. And choose them. We always talk about the freedom to choose, the power to choose. Here, this is what we need to choose. And it's not just simply, oh, it's positive thinking, you know, it's, uh, uh, no, it's about being realistic. It's about understanding that the moment in which I choose negative thoughts, there is only one way, down. And when you go down into depression, it's really, really hard to come back up. So what's the point? I often tell my, you really don't have a choice. It's either here positive, or otherwise, you know where you're gonna end up, so. Who's been depressed? Anybody? Okay, sometimes you don't recognize it, and that's even worse. Okay, awareness is so important. The trick is to recognize it before you go too deep. So you say, oh, okay, I better do something. Let me go back up. I often tell my clients, create your own uh, emotional well-being toolkit. <coughs> In my toolkit, I have the music that I love. I have uh, um, comedian tapes. I have uh, um, the books that inspire me. I have the phone numbers of people that I want to call if I'm not feeling good. I have uh, um, pictures that remind me of things. I do have an emotional toolkit. I strongly recommend that you build your own. Because uh, life is tough, okay? Life is this, right? Don't expect this in life, ain't gonna happen, okay? Life goes like this. So it's not, if there will be rainy days, is when the rainy days will come, because they will certainly come. So, when I'm smart and I'm emotionally, intel emotionally intelligent, I prepare myself for those days, especially when I feel really good. Make sense? Comments? Remember your small victories you're supposed to <laughs> Okay, so all of that was, we're pretty clear why emotional intelligence is important. It's important for our well-being. So let's go a little bit deeper, okay? Seven competencies of EI, but before we go there, let's talk about emo Let's talk about emotions. How many Basic emotions that you think are there. Did you have a question? What do you I did, I did, I did. Please. Well, and it was on what you were covering earlier about the thoughts, emotions, actions, and results. And I guess my question would be, how do you train your thoughts? We're gonna go there. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. First, let's recognize the emotions, so then we'll get to the thoughts. Okay. So. Basic emotions, so there are a lot of different emotions, okay? But basic emotions, what do you think? How many? Hint, look at the picture. Three. Oh. Four. 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 One. Yeah, counter, but that was good, <laughs> yes. So, um, glad, happy, right? Glad, mad, angry, sad, and scared. Glad, mad, sad, and scared. People told me, how come there is one good one and three bad ones? Actually, emotions are not bad. None of that. The moment in which you label them, then you make them bad for you. And that's another step in emotional intelligence. All of 
of them pretty much can be good or bad. I mean, if you're, if you're glad all the time, people think you're smoking something. That could be bad, okay? Sadness is great. Look at uh, uh, famous artists, uh, musicians, uh, creative people. So many of them, they went through that creativity because of a deep sense of sadness, which came from a deep sense of awareness of their own emotions, other emotions, the environments, and so on. But they connected to that. They felt the, this uh, sadness. They felt this compassion. They stimulated creativity. They used their sadness in a positive way. Anger is wonderful. I, I, I take an angry client over a depressed one at any time. Angry is easy. Angry, there is a lot of energy behind it. All I need to do is to switch a little bit to the direction, and then they're on their merry way to wonderful actions. It's just a matter of positive actions, and not necessarily. But the, 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 the energy, the angry energy is great. I mean, there are a lot of wonderful things that can be done with a social change. A lot of that happened that way without necessarily becoming violent, just using that energy. <coughs> I was talking to some of you before, I was telling them how much I struggled through my doctorate, all seven years of it, and uh, um, eventually what happened is I got angry, and I channeled that angry to uh, challenge the system and challenge myself in doing really what I was supposed to do. But that anger was very important. It gave me the courage to hold myself accountable. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I want to share this because it's really, really helpful. At least it was really helpful to me. When there is something really hard that you want to do, but you're struggling to do, hold yourself accountable to other people whose opinion that you value. I was dragging, right? I was ABD for five years. I finished all my coursework in two, okay? ABD, all about dissertation, okay? And uh, eventually I got tired and I told all my friends, I told my children who I never let down, this year I will be done. One more year and I will be done. The fear of letting them down was such a strong motivator how I held myself, I told all my colleagues, oh, so, you know, we're laughing, what about the dissertation you're supposed to write? When is that coming around? Oh, <laughs> go away. Okay, <laughs> but no, and it got done. So think about it, okay? Add the courage to step all the way out and hold yourself accountable to yourself and to others, and you'll get things done, you'll see. All right, so, Spoke about anger, spoke about sadness, uh, fear. Uh, fear is extremely important. Fear warns you where the dangers are, okay? The fear of becoming depressed will have to say, hey, I'm not going there, okay? Let me, let me take a different path. I'm gonna do something right now, okay? An important way to shift, and going back to your questions originally, some of the negative thoughts Move into action, physical action, and start pumping good blood in your brain. When I'm down, the first thing that I do is exercise. Oh, this is really light. Uh, you want to find something really heavy and really work it out, because that's really going to do something for you. People always say, oh, work out, uh, I need to join a gym, I need to um, uh, get a trainer, and then it costs money, and..." I I'm exercising, okay? You don't need expensive weights. Just keep on doing it, you'll be fine. And uh, you start sweating, and uh, um, it's working, okay? Anything is better than nothing. That's what I only tell my clients, anything. Start. You know what I do every morning? You know, it's cold outside, you really don't want to get out of bed and uh, work out. Oh, why? I'll do it tomorrow. Everybody familiar with the concept of procrastination? <laughs> Am I the only one? Okay, so what I do is I stay in bed, nice and comfy. 
I'm pretty much awake. I bend my knees, I'm laying down, and I do 100 crunches. <laughs> again, then you start, again, pumping that blood, getting the, working your core muscles. You see how different you feel after that. Then you bring it up to 200 or whatever it is, but it makes such a big difference that you start your day that way. It's so easy. Just a little tiny effort, one tiny victory. <coughs> bend your legs, otherwise you're going to hurt your back. That's why you bend your legs. Crunches. Not all the way sit ups, just little crunches. So important. Little things. Work out, grab a chair, lift it up, do it with a cup of coffee. <laughs> works for you. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So this is, let me share with you technically, the seven competencies of emotional intelligence, okay? And you have them all written in your handout. But uh, everything starts here, emotional self-awareness, okay? You got to know where you are with your feelings what's happening to you, and you've got to be honest about it. Oh, I never said, or I never did, or I never, uh, that is not going to help you. Honest self-awareness is where you start. Otherwise, there is no change. You know why when you go to an interview, they ask you, so, tell me your greatest strengths and your we greatest weaknesses. Everybody hate those. You know why they ask you that? You think they care what your strengths and weaknesses are? No. What they're trying to figure out is, uh, do you have a sense of self-awareness? Because if you don't have it, and you don't know what your strengths are, you cannot leverage them to be successful for my company, so you are useless to me. If you're not aware of your weaknesses, you're going to keep on making the same mistakes mistakes in judgment that me as an employer really fear that you are going to fall into. So that's why you always want to say, here I tell you, one of my biggest weaknesses is, I have trouble remembering things, especially names. It's a big weakness, right? That's why I write everything in this. <laughs> Not high tech, but it works. Okay. Right now I'm teaching for three different universities. I have a bunch of clients, engagements. Next week I'm going to Italy, all kinds of different things. Everything gets done because it's written here. Now, if it's not written here, it's a problem. But fundamentally, things get done because I'm aware of my weakness and I do something about it. Does it still sound like a weakness? I just shared a big one. You understand? A little interview approaching there. Okay. Self awareness, emotional expression. So I'm aware of my emotions. How do I express them? And the key word is appropriately. How do I express gladness appropriately? My happiness. How do I express sadness appropriately? How do I express anger appropriately? And how do I express my fear? I'm aware of my emotions, let me be aware of other people's emotions. It's important too when I want to build the relationships. Let me give you another career tip. When you go to an interview, always remember as soon as the, seat, the, the interview is a little bit warm, okay, you, you know, after 10, 15 minutes, ask this question to the interviewer. By the way, how long have you been working here? So they will tell you six months, 20 years, it really doesn't matter. Oh, that's great. And what do you love the most about working here? What do you love the most about your job? And they will tell you. According to what they tell you, then you can increase the question and say, what do you love the most about your executive team? Your clients, the people you work with, Get people to open up and talk to you about their emotions and their stories. There is something contagious about emotions. Okay? 
there is something called emotional transference. This works for all kinds of relationships. You're dating, use it, it's good too, okay? <laughs> Ask people what they love the most. Because when people open up and tell you about something they love and you're there looking and smiling and nodding, they're gonna end up loving you. Or at least liking you. Try it. In some room like that, what you got to lose? You're never asking anything inappropriate. Anytime you ask somebody to tell you what they love the most, that is never an inappropriate question. And then you go from there. Okay. So, emotional reasoning. Now that I'm aware of my emotions, I know how to express them appropriately, I'm aware of other people's emotions, how do I use all of that in order to make the appropriate decisions? After that, how do I manage my own emotions? How do I manage other people's emotions? How do I, how do I um, exercise emotional self-control when people push my buttons? Okay? Questions so far? Or comments? All right, let's go to the first one, self-awareness. <laughs> this is what happens sometimes, <laughs> or the other way around. We think we are a lion, and actually we are a kitten. We think we are a kitten, and we, but I mean we we are a kitten, but we think we are a lion or whatever. It's important to have the right good perceptions of who we are, and the best way, you know, is I am what I am. I'm faulty like everybody else. I got my problems. I got my weaknesses. I got my fear. I experience all four emotions. Yes, including sadness and fear and anger. Not always good. So, we're talking about wellness here. And wellness, just like leadership, just like everything else, starts from within. Right? So, self-awareness, it's always the first step. Why are you guys in school? Because you realized that there was something lacking, right? Knowledge of whatever it was, the degree, the expertise, the know-how. So you came to school in order to fill that gap. But what started in the very beginning, I am missing something. So I will address it. Now, <clears throat> if I'm not aware of how I feel, and how emotions are playing a part in who I am. What I'm going to do is, when I deal with others, other people, my own emotions, when we're talking about being contagious with our emotions, will impact the way other people feel. And depending on what kind of emotions I am experiencing, I will be giving others positive or negative emotions accordingly. That's why I was telling you before, in an interview, in order to get the right emotions, because let's face it, when people interview you, employer are looking for somebody that can do the job, yes, but they're also looking for somebody that they can get along. The hiring manager in the back of his or her mind is asking his or herself, I have to work with you 50 weeks a year, 40 hours a week, do I like you? Because you can be as good as you want, but if we have to rub elbows 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, and I don't like you, life is too short to make it so miserable for myself. So the question for you is, out of self-awareness, how likable am I? And if you want to go deeper there, you want to ask yourself, how much do I like myself? Because if I don't like myself, it's really, really hard to be likable to others. So you want to start at the very core of things, it's all about self-love. If you in your mind entertain thoughts, oh, I'm no good, or I'm stupid, or I'm in inadequate, or whatever it is, you're hurting yourself. 
by entertaining those thoughts, you are hurting yourself. And you are hurting everybody else around you as well. Especially those who love you. Anybody relate to what I'm talking about? Yes, please. I have a client. did everything for me. No depends on what's about me. And then he threw me under the bus. And I had to regroup. And I said, this still is my number two customer. I still have to deal with them. I can't be emotional about this. I got to let it go. Because I was really pissed off about it. And I've, I've learned to. It's still, it's still a process because in the back of my mind, it's like, you'll do that again. So the only thing I can think of is to do everything I can to be doing what I was doing in front of and take the emotions out of it. That hurts, right? It did hurt, <coughs> considerable. Okay, so what do you do when you're in pain? And you said of something very, very important. I need to let it go because that this is impacting all the other clients because now it's like dogs. I got bit by two dogs. One time a dog in my in the face, one time uh, somebody, uh, you know, it was not their fault, you know. I always get into <laughs> dogs I don't know, having puppies. And I don't know, the puppies are not there and I go, oh hi, wow. So, um, to me, for a certain amount of time, uh, my experience with dogs is I see a dog and I go, oh, okay, yes, uh, yeah, I don't care how small it is, you know. The, the little one in the leg was a small one. So big, small, they're all dangerous to me. They're all going to hurt me. And that's what goes on, right? Because these are the thoughts and these are my emotions and there goes fear. So, what to do? Actually, why don't we do it right now? Hand out. Your hand out. There is an exercise there. On the third page, it looks like this. Everybody see yours is not in color, sorry, but okay. It looks like that, right? Okay, so what does it tell you? It tells you a little uh, Buddhist story. And uh, how, uh, Gina, how much time do I have? 10 minutes? Okay. There's a little story there, and then uh, here read the bullet points. The things that we hold on to, bear grudges, or perhaps feel angry and hurt about, cloud our minds and prevent us from being the best we can be. Letting go usually involves some form of forgiveness or acceptance, whether it's yourself, someone else, and so on. So, pick, a, pick that example, okay? What do I need to let go of? So I need to let go of my anger, I need to let go of the, the memory of being hurt and so on. But also understand how do I benefit by holding on? That is a very tough question. When we hold on to something, somehow we benefit from that. Otherwise, we would have let it go. I mean, we, it's, it's a rational thinking. We benefit from emotions of sadness or fear. Many times, we benefit from emotions of victimism. We can talk a lot about we have a choice. We can be victims of circumstances, or we be, can be creators under certain circumstances. Victim is. This happened to me, and we're fully justified because we have been victimized, okay? But that happened a while back. And given, okay, it takes a six months to two years of grieving to overcome a deep loss. Deep loss include losing a job, or losing somebody you love, a divorce, even something like that. Because it got you in the core of you. Remember the way he put it. I gave him my very best. I tried everything and this person to I mean, under the bus. That's a big loss. Okay. How long ago did this happen? About a month ago, so it's still very, very fresh. Okay. Take the time to grieve. 
grieving is not necessarily crying. Grieving is embracing your sadness and expressing it appropriately within yourself or with somebody you love. Thank you for sharing this story, by the way. And what you want to do, we are in a, you want to meet with a friend, maybe you've already done that, but you want to do it many times. This happened to me. And then you name the emotions. And I'm sad. For men, it's more difficult because we never get hurt, right? We grew up in John Wayne thing. Somebody shoot us, we pull out the bullet with a teeth, pull it out, and we don't have it. Because that example we have been given, okay? Big problem, yeah. A wonderful ground for divorce. So uh, it's, it, it's really, really important because we care about ourselves and we have this self-awareness to find the right way of grieving and eventually to let it go. But the point is, and again, one month is to, to is very, you still can do the exercise that what I'm talking about, but you're fully justified in self-compassion and I'm hurt, I got hurt, and it still hurts, okay? So, get together with the right people. Friends are the people that can see you in your worst state and will not think that it is permanent. Have you ever heard that quote? So you should have friends like that where you can open up. If not, find a professional, find a coach. Somebody because see this is the other the other trap. Especially if we are givers, <coughs> and I'm surrounded by wonderful giving people. We don't want to share our pain with others because we are afraid to give them our pain. Or even our anger. We don't want people to see that because it's negative. So what do we do? We keep it all inside. How do we resolve it if we keep it all inside? So the trick is, how do I let go? First of all, you write about it. You use the term pissed off. Worse. Let it out, okay? All right? And that because that is really, really important. Write down the way you feel and express it as much as possible. I've done that, okay? Uh, with notebooks, okay? I like to have some padding underneath because the way I write it is, <coughs> okay? Because I need to let that. I was born in Sicily, by the way. We got lava in the blood instead of blood, so it's more of a um, so, okay, it's really, really important to write it down, express it, but also understand how do I benefit. That is the part that is tricky sometimes. But hanging on to certain emotions allows me to justify a certain part of myself that doesn't want to do certain things. You're in a position, you have clients, and you're supposed to help them and give them. And like it or not, <clears throat> there is an emotional component to it. And that emotional component, your compassion, your understanding, your love for them is what's going to make you successful, different from everybody else, and uh, really successful in what you do. If you let this uh, situation take away from your ability to love and to give, it takes away from your passion to give and to do the best for your clients. And then it gives you an excuse for not giving your best in your great ability to love when I've been hurt before. So when you come to that understanding, then you say, yeah, this is the way I feel. I got hurt and I need to heal. Because it's all about healing. But now I can also let go because I know my thoughts tell me that that is the right thing to do. Not all dogs bite. After that, I bought myself a dog. Is that not poor thing? But one big one more <laughs> okay? Hey, I was nine years old, you know, and we loved him to death. You know, 120 pound beast. You know, I was not afraid of him, and he did help me deal with all the other dogs. Now I'm not afraid of dogs anymore. But you see where I'm going with this. So this exercise becomes very important 
and then look at the bottom just for a second. Imagine letting go of everything on this list. How does it feel? Create a vision. How am I going? How did I feel before it happened? How was I with my clients? What was my ability to give, to care for them? It was great. I want to go back to that. But I got hurt. I don't want to. You would be going back and forth. Again, don't expect anything in a straight line. It's a roller coaster, right? Life. It's a, that kind of wave happens in everything. Right? And remember, when you're going down and you're there, who likes to go roller coasters? Anybody? Am I the only one? A few people? Okay. And then you know very well, and actually people that don't like roller coasters. You know when you get to the top and you know it's gonna go down like this, okay? The more you hold back, the, the more terrorizing is it going to be when you go over the line. So actually what you want to do is the opposite. Go forward with your body towards the fall. And instead of holding back, go towards the emotions that you are resisting. Call on into your courageous, adventurous spirit that you all have and go for it. It's going to make such a huge difference because even your guts is going to go with the flow. Go with life and embrace those emotions. It's going to make you feel so much better. Talking about emotional wellness, you want to be the heroes of your own life, that's how you do it. When I'm about to see this going down, instead of holding back, uh, my old job, oh, a new career is so scary. Oh, no, the other way. Let me go into it. I've been hurt in a relationship before, and I'm going to be single for the rest of my life because it, uh, oh, go. Make sense? Yes. What else does it say there? And then you go through water. Please do this exercise, write three or four of those things, read the whole thing, see the concept. That can be very, very helpful. And I'll have so much more to share with you, but my time is limited. But I really, really hope that this was useful, it gave you some thoughts on how to improve your emotional wellness over the holidays. With that, thank you very much. share the PowerPoint with participants? Um, the whole thing without explanations is kind of uh, messy, especially this is where I go deep. And uh, um, ooh, I, I, I don't want it to be misunderstood. So if I, would have, if I were to give the entire presentation, I'll be glad to share it. This particular circumstance, because I only covered so much, I want to give you, you understand, I want this to be understood with the, <clears throat> the right examples and my explanations. So in other words, sorry, the answer is no. Thank you. <laughs> but you do have this. Uh, at the end, sorry, you do have an emotional intelligence self-assessment. Uh, self yeah. Take it and score yourself. It's simply interesting to see how you score in emotional intelligence. You cannot do right or wrong. And like everything else, if you score low, oh, I'm so low in emotion, you should say, yes, great, self-awareness. Now I know what I need to do in order to improve. You never lose. You are never defeated. Got it? Thank you very much, Robert. I will stop calling you Dr. Romeo now. Hey, all right. <laughs> um, I think it's a great topic to end our calendar year for. I think a lot of times people think, Oh, it's 2015, I'm going to work out, as you pointed out, and then do other things to be well. But we rarely reflect a little bit deeper and look into our emotions and our wellness uh, in other ways. As you said, it affects a lot of things that we do. So please join me again in thanking Robert. For the